Welcome to Strip Cover Lit, where we squeeze the bigger picture out of literature. I'm Adrian Fort. And I'm Dalton Gentry. And we are here for part two in a four-part series as we travel through Adjustment Day by Chuck Palahniuk. Um, yeah. That pretty much sums it up. So this is Strip Cover Lit. We're done here, right? We're, we're good? We're good? Yeah. yeah. I, think, I think we're all right. Uh, this is part two of the read-along. This is up to two page 217. And uh, damn, if this just didn't get weirder, <laughs> it's... Yeah, well, so for me, the the hellacious part is if that first if that first bit, page one through one hundred and five, one hundred and four, if that was not hard enough to summarize, this <laughs> is even worse. Uh, well, we're in the same boat again. We still have multiple characters, and now we have characters who are assuming different names, so they're same character, just referred to differently, which makes life all the better. Um, however. Adjustment day has happened. We are now in the present. We're not into the buildup. Uh, times are changing. The Declaration of Interdependence has been enacted. And we are splitting the United States up into different little uh, sub-countries, basically. Right. Uh, and you will live in the country based on your race or your secu sexual orientation. Uh, because as Adjustment Day decrees, it, it's more productive that way. Well, but it's it's... Also, a very damning of identity politics, which are far left and the far right, because this is the end outcome of both of those systems, segregation. Okay. And the part that makes so very little... So we, we get... The whole time you're reading, you're thinking, okay, well, this doesn't make any sense because are you choosing to identify as, as white or as homosexual? Mm -hmm. Are you choosing to identify as... Um, so, so you have to take a DNA test. Yeah, and we do have some characters even slipping under the radar, living in different societies. Passing. Yes. yes. Um, but there's there's so many little things that don't make sense. So it's not until, I think, page 180, I think, that we get any mention of Asians. Okay. And what is it? Oh, uh, well, you know, I mean, they, they all flew back. Yeah. 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 So, I, I mean... What, here's, here's the thing that gets me. For me, there's one type of person I really can't stand. Okay. The, nah, that's not true. There's two types of people I really can't stand. Uh, they're just dirty people. I don't want to live near them. I don't want to be around them. Uh, one is hipsters. Okay. And two is people with business degrees. Ooh, okay. Okay. I give you the business degrees. Nobody Disgusting likes disgusting people. Yeah. I do not. I. I do not. But at the same time, I do not identify as an English literature major. Okay. So I would not choose to live in the English literature major country. But I don't want to live near any hipsters or any business majors. Okay. Uh, do you realize how terrible the English literature major country would be? Oh, it'd be just so awful. Just awful. I mean, it would be the hipster neighborhood, ironically enough. Like, there would be the hipster borough of the English Lit Department. The a, William Faulkner Avenue. A, I'm not sure it's ironic. Okay. <laughs> so, that, that's one of the things that absolutely bothers me about hipsters. Um, but, two, I really don't like hipsters. Okay, fair enough. Like, I, I do feel better. Like, I showered today. I mean, I've been considering that business masters. But, you know, <laughs> I'm passing on it. But, anyway, uh, adjustment day. This... Unfortunately, is still not doing it for me. Well, it's written completely wrong. It's it's a train wreck, man. It is so much going on, and like I still haven't just been taken by it yet. Uh, there are some good parts in this, though. Some parts I did enjoy. There is some brilliant writing. There are some moments that really illuminate people. Okay. That is what I will give this. What did okay. you mean by that? Well, I do have a few quotes here and there, a few different pieces that, I mean, really just, they were captivating. They were good. A quote here on page 109. Uh, All his life he'd been taught that men were protectors and guards, and the most noble destiny he could attain would to die in order to preserve another person's life. If humor comes from anything, it arises from an immense feeling of relief. Charlie felt joy now because, for once, death was outside him. I like that. That's nice there. That is a good piece here. Uh, there is a bit, it's not a quote, it's more of just a bit of a scene where Shasta is wearing the crown of candles. Uh, very, very Lady Liberty uh, symbolism going on with that. And one of the candles, you know, extinguishes itself. And I'm like, mm, 
That's nice. Right. That's a good little touch there, Chuck. Uh, but then you get moments like this, where good old Chuck Palahniuk decides, as I'm oh, throwing in, you're gonna put that in there? bits of literature here and there. Do you, oh, do you have the same page open? Yeah, yeah. Isn't that wonderful? Do you want to take the reins on that? Well, mine is for a different reason. So, okay. if we could, do you have any other quotes? Let's just go if, with yours. If we, That's if we fine. could skip that for now, okay. I think I think it'd be uh, compelling to come back to it later. Okay. But I think that this is written completely wrong. All right. My main thrust for today is that this is written not in literary fashion. This is written. This is written as if Chuck Palahniuk had never read a book before. Okay. Um, do you remember? Did you have a point there? I get nervous when authors start using other authors' works. As reference, it's very The Fault in Our Stars here. And, like, if you haven't seen Adrian's rant on The Fault in Our Stars, please do. Please go give that a watch. It's Hot garbage. pleasurable. But anyway, go on. Um, so, when. Before. Okay, so I fell out of readership during a lot of my high school years. Okay. During that time, I was still considering myself a writer. Every time I sat down to write the epic, the one. The one. Great American novel. It was it was obviously about revolution because okay. I was a young man, and it always comes from the eyes of the leader of the revolution. Okay. I mean, it, did you ever fall into that trope? Did you? So, so I, I think that it's just very easy to imagine. Okay, so I'm going to write about the revolution, the great revolution. Who better to tell it through than the eyes of the person who's starting the revolution? That's a terrible way to start to tell a story. Okay. Um, the way you tell this story is through someone, A, alienated by all of these um, trappings, someone who would fall between so many of these countries uh, and who is not wanted by any of them, and B, someone who has no idea that the revolution is coming. Okay. That way you can <clears throat> explain these things without browbeating your reader. Yeah. Showing what's happening rather than telling what's happening. That's the basics of Yeah, writing. and all this is is telling. Okay. From page one, this is telling. And if you are using characters... So we, we've got that scene. I can't remember their names. There is the, the mixed couple, the white man and the black woman, who are passing themselves off as homosexual so that they can live in the homosexual country... And still see each other secretly. Yes. Uh, Mr. Gentry, the straight man yeah. living uh, in, as, a, in, as, as, a as a gay man. Yes, please carry on. Um, Tell me all about it. And, and Delicious. Delicious. Uh, so Gentry and Delicious. That is interesting. It was. That, that is was an interesting piece. dynamic. They are interesting characters. They are having to go through interesting things. And from that story, one of the, one of the things that I've said oftentimes on this channel about short stories is there's often... One paragraph, somewhere in, in like the, the second quarter of a short story from which you can extrapolate 80% of what happens in okay. that short story. That is a little snippet of this novel from which you could extrapolate almost everything that has been told to us so far from the way it was shown to us there. That is the way you tell this story. Okay. That is the way you write this novel. You tell it through the people who are suffering from these events. You do not tell it from the eyes, the guy who plays what's his name. You get that through rumor. You get that through, um, yeah, just rumor. Through someone saying, you know, that Talbot Reynolds wasn't really a politician. Okay. You know, uh, because then y you even keep the mystery with it, right? All right. So th how much mystery is there here? There is, uh, there's a void of mystery. There's no mystery. And I think it's interesting you said that you... Uh, you well, found... the, okay, I, I, I'm not to interrupt, but mm -hmm. the only mystery here is mystery that is um, necessitated by the fact that Polinick has forgotten to address things. Okay. Uh, I do think it's interesting you brought up the care of the fact that you were interested in Delicious and Gentry, because that was a very interesting bit. I am not invested in any other of these characters. I don't care about Jamal. I don't care about Charlie. I don't care about Gavin. I want to be interested in Shasta. I really like Shasta, and I want to be interested in her. You would. I would. Uh, but I don't. I'm not. I find nothing there. Uh, so anyway, uh, what do we want to get well, into with this here? not only that, um, see, it's so hard for me to remember names in this novel. Charm. We are introduced to Charm 
on like page 200. It's a 300 page novel. Yeah. You are not still introducing necessary characters at, on page 200 yeah. of a novel. But characters are still being slung left and right. Just rapid breakneck speed. Without qualm, they are being given to us. Yes. So this is absolutely the wrong way to, to tell this novel. And there's so... So the, the, the further I get into this novel, the more small things are starting to piss me off. Uh, I noticed, like, I, I mentioned the thing with all the Asians just flew back to yeah. Asia land, right? Um, pissed me off. Because, so, so there's three countries. You wanted to play, you wanted to write a novel about identity politics and how it's bad. Because I think that's the commentary being made here. You wanted to write a novel about identi identity politics and how they're bad, and you broke the country down into three segments? Yes. That's it. Uh, black, white, and homosexual. Yes. yes. That, that's it. No one else got a piece of the pie. Fair. Um, what the hell are you doing? Now, uh, every time uh, I... But j just real quick. Yes, to, please to, do. To, to, go, to show you how minute the things are that are starting to piss me off, what ear is that? Are we looking at the tag, or are we just looking at the colors here? Uh, no, which side of the head is that ear from? That would be the left ear. That would be the right ear. Which ears are they supposed to be taking in the novel? We're taking the wrong ears on the cover, aren't we? The wrong ears are on the cover! Uh-huh, uh-huh. I'm not even mad about the fact that they're, they're purple, blue, and green. That could be commentary on identity politics. I've been reading mine without the cover because I hate trying to read with a dust jacket on there, so, like, I, I haven't even noticed the ears, so... Yeah. Good on you. So every, everything is wrong with this. Everything. Um, Down to the cover art. So we talked about this. This is satire, obviously, or it's trying to be satire, and that's fine. Um, I, I enjoy that. I'm a big fan of Vonnegut. I like things like this. Uh, I read The Sellout by Paul Beatty. I loved it. You said you weren't that impressed with it. I got ten pages in couldn't do it. Okay. Just um, because of the I, I wasn't a fan of the writing. Okay, like, I never fair. even got to the themes involved. Really, that's fair. So. Um, great book, by the way. Highly suggest it. This last scene that we're left with here from 2.13 to 2.17. Uh, oh, my. That, that's a hard one to read. This is where Miss Josephine has basically placed herself in blackface and speaks with the most racist dialogue I have ever seen uh, in order to try to pass as Jamal is living in her home. Right. So I, I, I'm excited to see where that's going because that was an uncomfortable bit to read. It was... I can, I can see how it would be uncomfortable, especially since Miss Josephine reads like... A Saint Josephine, type. <laughs> like the the way yeah, she reads like someone from Saint Joseph, which is a place that both of us have lived at, at one point in time. Uh, Dalton still lives, mm -hmm. um, but I, so I can I can get through that as long as there is commentary underneath, and the commentary underneath is that Jamal sees straight through this. Yes, Jamal is not uh, confused by this. Uh, the commentary here is that Miss Josephine um, is trying to pass as black in in the most obviously racist way, okay. um, which is a racism of ignorance, right? She has no idea. Correct. She has. She seems to have no idea that black people are people, Correct. right? Not, not caricatures, um, uh, w which is basically racism of ignorance. What I'm going for in this argument here is uh, the racism aspect of this in satire, I believe, was done well in the sellout. I enjoyed it. It, it flowed well. It worked for me. This seems like it is trying to be... Is satirical. It's trying to be uh, hyper, like hyper violence, hyper racist, all these things, just for the sake of being so. Uh, it, it's just not selling me on it. It's like Polonick sat down with a decent idea and just went overboard and didn't execute correctly. That's right. what I'm getting so far. Um, now Polonick does have an amazing ability to turn things around. The ending of this could be just a gut punch, just an amazing ending. It could, I'm but I'm not looking quickly. Yeah, yeah, not holding my breath on that. So, so if we're going to bring up Polnick himself, I'm going to I'm going to bring out a sports analogy, but I'm going to make it clear, and it's going to be brief. They say, do you want me to leave? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> fair enough. Um, so, in around 2008, I believe it was the Chiefs, the Kansas City Chiefs, the uh, American Football League, Kansas City Chiefs, National Football League, but American Football playing Kansas City Chiefs. Lost their starting quarterback. Okay. Quarterback being the most important player on the team. Most important because it's so very, very hard to be quarterback. Lost their starter. 
Um, their second stringer as well. And I believe their third stringer was playing like hot garbage. So they had this kid, this young kid named Tyler Thigpen, and they were like, well, put him in the game. See what happens. Yeah, and sucked. Okay. Terrible, right? And on sports radio in Kansas City, there was a young guy named Nick Wright who is now on FS1. You can see, you can, he's with Chris Carter on a, on a show now, national wide, nationwide. But... Um, this young guy named Nick Wright was taking all these calls. Tyler Thigpen sucks. We need to cut him. Tyler Thigpen sucks. Blah, 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 blah. And he made Nick Wright the most stunning point I have ever been exposed to when talking about sports. Okay. Um, all these people were calling in yelling about Tyler Thigpen sucks. And Nick Wright said, and I'll never forget this. Nick Wright said, Tyler Thigpen didn't ask for this. Tyler Thigpen knows he is not an NFL quarterback, but he plays quarterback. And they asked him to be an NFL quarterback. Would you say no? And if he did say no, what options would the Chiefs have had then? Do not be mad at Tyler Thigpen. Damn good Tyler point. Tyler Thigpen is doing what Tyler Thigpen has to do. I am starting to wonder at this point. Fight Club was phenomenal. Fair. Lullaby was good. Okay. Haunted was brilliant in, in, in sprints. They haven't liked anything else but Chuck Palahniuk. So is he just doing what he needs to do at this point? Chuck Palahniuk didn't ask for this. Okay. Chuck Palahniuk wanted to be a writer. Chuck Palahniuk did not intend to come out of the gates and uh, write the great American novel first and then have all these eyes on him saying, are you going to do it again? Okay. But I think he is suffering under that pressure uh, to do it again. Not to write the next story that presents itself to him. Not to write the next novel that he wants to write. But to constantly be trying to write Fight Club again. Okay. So is Polinick being typecasted, basically? Is he stuck into a role where he is trying to... Uh, he wants to break away from it, but uh, hey, man, if you want to pay the bills, you want to make it happen again, how about the sequel? I have seen no promise that he's trying to break away from it. Okay. I do not believe so. It, the book, the book industry is faltering. Yes, right. Chuck Palahniuk is a huge name. Hmm. There are so many small publishers that have Chuck Palahniuk said, "Hey, you know, I've got this thing. It doesn't really fit what I normally do. Would you mind floating it out there for me?" They do it. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Uh, now I know he's like I'm. I'm assuming that he has signed deals for multiple books, but. That's that's how that would have. That's the only. That, no one would tell him no. Okay. In fact, didn't Hemingway write a shit book to get out of a contract? I, I'm not sure. I'm, to be I honest, in my Hemingway, Hemingway history, signed, Hemingway signed like a three book deal with somebody and wanted to get out of it. it was like, well, I'm just gonna write this garbage. Fair enough. And put it out there, and he got out of the contract. It, it's upsetting to think because you are right. Fight Club out of the gates was amazing. It really was. Um, but man, this is this is rough. This it's is hard. Uh, yeah. Anyway, I, I think we're getting to this point now, and I wanted to bring it up earlier because it's one of my pages that I marked here to talk about. Uh, at one point in this, not only is Polinick uh, referencing a lot of other major literary works, which is, you know, eh, dangerous waters to be doing, Polinick references Polinick. Polinick references Fight Club. Yeah. Which, when we're talking about, is this, you know, his uh, Project Mayhem, you know, a uh, kiss towards Project Mayhem? Is this Polinick trying to be Polinick? When he starts referencing himself. Well, I'll read the quote here. Uh, Once a man's knees are back age, how will he earn his livelihood? Adjustment day was about men joining forces. Walter had looked up from his typing, so this is like Fight Club. His new old man had shaken his head. He'd asked, are you referring to the novel? What novel? Had, wa had asked Walter. His fingers poised above the keyboard. Talbot had smirked. Hardly, he'd said. Fight Club was about empowering each man through a series of exercises. His ghastly face shined with, a, with its coating of blood. Fight Club taught each man that he had capacity beyond his greatest concept of himself. Then it set each man free to fulfill his destiny, to build a house, to write a book, to paint a self-portrait. Walter could recall that much from the film. Shaking his head dismissively, Talbot muttered, Polinick, all of his work is about castration. Castration or abortion. So I think I've got my answer for how 
self-aware is this piece. Okay. Because this is, like this says, in theme, this is the anti-Fight Club. Okay. But it's still trying to be Fight Club. Yes. But when it references Fight Club, which is by the same author, um, I've got to... That's the only thing that's giving me hope towards the end that there is some okay. pulling this out. Uh, now, in the event that we've gone through all of this and he's referencing Fight Club, he's referencing himself, he's writing the same thing, the same type of novel, if he swings this at the end and makes it something, oh boy. Yeah, I will still contend that it's written wrong. Or, if this is his Hemingway garbage novel... And the next novel he wants to write is something different, where he gets away from this. I, do we consider this just a, a, a good move? A good move by Polinick? You know, I, I, I don't know. Uh, because of, right now, like, <sighs> this is rough. I'm not crazy about this. It, I'm really it do, not. It does take balls to write about this right now. It does. I'll give him that. Uh, this is very in the now. This is very topical. Uh, but man, it's this well, not just only not is good. it not only is it very now and very topical, but what it's saying is the now and the topical is stupid. Fair. And here's why. Okay. So I, I, I don't know. I'm 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 still struggling here. Okay. I'm still struggling. When, before we started reading this, I did say I, I do enjoy a good Polonic and like, hey, I'm excited for this. I mean, how often do you get this? It's taken its toll on me. I've been reading it throughout the week, and like a significant other is like, so is it getting better? I'm like, mm -mm, it ain't. It is the same thing. So one small thing, when you very first started, you said, I do enjoy a good Polonic. And how did I respond to that text message? You haven't read enough Polonic. Right. Yeah, fair enough. Um, but two, for me, one of the things that makes this better is sitting down to talk about it. Okay. Are you noticing that as well? That's fair. <clears throat> For uh, me, this, this novel has to be masticated. Okay. I, and that's a good point with any type of reading is if you read something, you should always sit down and talk about it. Y you will enjoy it more. Mm -hmm. The fact of the matter is, though, that it should be enjoyable on itself. This novel is hot garbage until I sit down to think about it, right? Like, <clears throat> I can't stand this novel while I'm reading it. It's when I start taking notes, when I start writing, drafting a show, when we actually sit down and shoot the show, okay. that it gets better for me. Okay. Uh, I'm hoping he turns this around. Do you have anything else you want to hit on here real I've quick? I've got one small okay. qualm here. There is a character named Gavin McGinnis in this novel. Okay. Um, do you know who Gavin McInnes is? I do not. I'll talk uh, the character in the novel is G-A-V-Y-N-M-C-I-N-N-E-S. In real life, Gavin, G-A-V-I-N, McInnes, so the same name, but you're substituting a Y for an I, mm -hmm. is a blowhard right-wing commentator on, of all things... Identity politics. Okay. Like, he's a guy that has made... I, I think he came up through YouTube. And Gavin in this is a homosexual man who's living in a heterosexual nation state uh, because he's unable to move past that with the new uh, uh, logistics with the policies and everything. Right. Uh, so, oh, is he taking a shot? I don't know. Like, if he were taking a shot, I don't think it would be a legal one. <laughs> like, I, <laughs> Um, so I can only imagine that that he's completely ignorant to Gavin McInnes's existence. Okay, but there's a couple of things there. No, there's no way. There's no way an author who submitted this for to editors, who's had people right. review this, no one caught that. That's what I was going to say. There's no way. I but I don't. Maybe that's why it's with a Y. They thought, well, this is enough. Okay, but but two. I, it would suggest to me, if Polinick is not familiar with that individual, that he has not done his research on this subject. Not because Gavin McGinnis adds anything to the conversation. Because I think he's really just sort of vapid. I've never seen him make a good point. Maybe okay. there's some somewhere, but he seems to just be a blowhard. Um, he does not add to the conversation... But he's a big part of it. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like He doesn't stop with the stuff. It's all he really, I, all I've ever seen him really talk about. Um, so that is just a weird, a weird little quirk. 
that sets things off for me. Okay. Right? Like, say, I, you know, I can't even think of a, I can't even think of a, an example for this. Um, say someone was writing a book that was mocking BookTube and they, they accidentally wrote a character named German Banana Books. Fair. As opposed to Poland banana books. Fair. Like, you should copyright that right now. While like, you we don't, have a chance. You don't. You don't accident into that. No, there is no way that's an accident. There is no way that slipped under the radar. There. I mean, now that you've brought that up, that that had to have been known by someone. And if not, wow, people aren't doing their jobs. Yeah, I, I, I don't understand how that would have how that would have s- slipped past. All um, right. It, it, it is strange to see the name Rachel Dolezal. Okay. In print. Um, especially with all of the things, like, Sean King is popping up again. Do you know Sean King? I don't. He is uh, an activist who has made his chops through the Black Lives Matter movement. Okay. People are saying he's white. Okay. He is extremely light-skinned if he is not white. Um, but it is another... So, in the section with uh, Miss Josephine, Rachel Dolezal pops up. Like, had Sean King popped up, I would have just called bullshit and said, this was written yesterday. Okay. This was written in a week. So Give I, me my money back. Unfortunately, <laughs> we're in the same place again, though. This is, uh, it, it is interesting. There's some interesting social commentary going on, and in concept, it, it could be great. It, it, it's it, just not executing. Yeah. It, 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 uh, it, yeah. Okay. It might be brilliant. It's just not there yet. Um, it, it's going to take a hell of a last third. Okay. For, for this to for this to turn around. Well, we're going to finish that. We're going to find that last third next yeah, week. Yeah, and so next week is 217 through the finish. Um, and the week after that, we'll have a review up for the novel. But I... I mm, okay. I don't know. We're going to see where this goes. Yeah. We'll be here next week. Yeah. Uh, if, if you like this sort of thing, we would appreciate it if you hit the like button below. Subscribe if you have not, as this will be a four-part journey through... Chuck Polinick's maybe masterpiece. Uh, you can follow us on Twitter at Strip Cover and on Instagram at Strip Cover Lit.